The Sapphire Blue Oni Mask was created in an app called Nomad on my M2 iPad Pro. I'm not sponsored by this app, but I get great practice in using the masking feature, the duplicate array curve function. Shortcuts like the stamp texture tool helps me create this like in an hour. When I'm ready to 3D print this, I'll export it as an STL file and make sure visible is selected. Airdrop it to the desktop and load it into the Lychee Slicer. Every time, my model from Nomad is going to be super tiny. Repair. Uniformly scale up to 180 millimeters wide. Make it a little wider on the Y axis and on the X axis too. Just a little bit. Flip it upside down 180 degrees on the Y axis so much of the supports end up on the inside of the mask. Every single time, I reset my support settings back to factory. Top left corner in the printer's menu, let's choose a printer. I choose a resin, the default resin with the highest percentage of success. This is what the settings look like. For the smoothest prints possible, I use this layer height. 0.051 millimeters thick. Supports are super really easy to apply. To have less damage to the model, I just turn down the tip diameter. 0.3 is good. And then generate automatic supports. And then I'll scroll up through all the layers, starting from the bottom. I'm looking for these little pieces of islands. You see the blue islands in this mass of trees? The automatic support does a great, great, great job at doing this, but I always add a little bit more. The areas that need supports will be highlighted in yellow grid. Supports don't use that much material, so don't be worried about wasting resin. However, if your model is not supported correctly, it's gonna fall off, and then you got a waste of resin. With a mask like this, usually if I do have filled print, it's around the teeth area. I scrub up, you'll see lots of tiny little blue islands. I always add extra, extra to the teeth. As the build plate lifts, this ensure there's no shifting back to forward or left to right, especially with a super fast printer like the one I'm going to be using for this mask. I'll be using the Photon Model M5S Pro by Anycubic. It's not available in the slicing software yet. On the regular M5S, this will take 12 hours. I'm going to export this as an STL file with the supports. Like you'll be adding the new printer soon. To print this mask, I'm going to open up Photon Workshop. I really don't like the support settings in here, so that's why I did it in Lychee Slicer first. I changed the resin to default resin, the normal resin, slice my file, and export it. Dang, so many pop-ups. I don't read them, I just click cancel. With fast resin, I could print this in 1.5 hours. With regular resin, it's gonna take 10 hours. Next part, we're gonna mask up. Always upgrade your thumb drive to a SanDisk thumb drive. Wap out the high-speed frosted FEP sheet for a standard FEP clear sheet. I always have extra vats for my printers. Before I begin any print, I remove the build plate. To make sure I have strong adhesion every time, I clean it with 99% isopropyl alcohol to clean up any residue of resin. This is Lot Max Blue Water Washable Resin. I didn't expect it to be this blue, but I fill it up all the way to the max fill line. Reattach the self-leveling plate, tighten it back up. It's winter time, so I turn on the air filter and turn on the heater. Set it to 20 degrees Celsius. Previous printers don't have this heater, so just make sure your room is not too cold. The build plate will lower into the liquid vat and then perform a self-leveling test. It's totally up to you how fast you want your print to go, but I always go just a little bit slower so I can capture all the details that I sculpted on my iPad before. You can see the UV light carrying the layer and then the plate lifts it up. It came out amazing. There was not a single support that was not attached to the mask. There were no visible layer lines and it was totally smooth and there were no failures around the teeth. Next, let's process it.